A reading from the prophet Daniel. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, You have had a vision, O king. This is what you saw. A statue, a great statue of extreme brightness, stood before you, terrible to see. The head of this statue was of fine gold. Its chest and arms were of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet part iron, part earthenware. While you were gazing, a stone broke away, untouched by any hand, and struck the statue, struck its feet of iron and earthenware, and shattered them. And then, iron, and then iron and earthenware, bronze, silver, gold, all broke into small pieces as fine as chaff on the threshing floor in summer. The wind blew them away, leaving not a trace behind. And the stone that had struck the statue grew into a great mountain, mountain filling the whole earth. This was the dream. Now we will explain to the king what it means. You, O king, king of kings, to whom <clears throat> God of heaven has given sovereignty, power, strength, and glory, the sons of men, the beasts of the field, the birds of heaven, wherever they live, he has entrusted your rule, making you king of them all. You are the golden head, and after you another kingdom will rise not so great as you, and then a third of bronze, which will rule the whole earth. There will be a fourth kingdom, hard as iron, as iron shatters and crushes all. Like iron that breaks everything to pieces, it will crush and break all the earlier kingdoms. The feet you saw, part earth and where part iron, are a kingdom which will, which will be split in two, but which will retain something of the strength of iron, just as you saw the iron and the clay of the earthenware mixed together. The feet were part iron, part earthenware. The kingdom will be partly strong and partly weak. And just as you saw the iron and the clay of the earthenware mixed together, so the two will be mixed together in the seed of man, but they will not hold together any more than iron will blend with earthenware. In the time of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. This kingdom will not pass into the hands of another race. It will shatter and absorb all the previous kingdoms and itself last forever. Just as you saw the stone untouched by hand break from the mountain and shatter iron, bronze, earthenware, silver and gold, the great God has shown the king what is to take place. The dream is true, the interpretation exact. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Glory and eternal praise to him. All things the Lord has made, bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Angels of the Lord, bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Heavens, bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Waters above heavens, bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Powers of the Lord, all bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Hallelujah. 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 Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When some were talking about the temple, remarking how it was adorned with fine stonework and votive offerings, Jesus said, All these things you are staring at now, the time will come when not a single stone will be left on another. Everything will be destroyed. And they put to him this question. Master, they said, when will this happen then? And what sign will there be that this is about to take place? Take care not to be deceived, he said. Because many will come using my name and saying, I am he, and the time is near at hand. Refuse to join them. And when you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened. For this is something that must happen, but the end is not so soon. Then he said to them, Nation will fight against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and plagues and famines here and there. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, to more eagerly bring your work to completion. The end times are near. Ancient societies had an acute sense both of the precarious nature of human life and of the fact that one day the world would end. Indeed, for the first century Jew, the destruction of the temple was connected with the end of the world. In the days when Solomon's temple still stood, the Israelites felt secure because of God's promise to the nation of an eternal heritage to David. The temple then became an impressive and tangible symbol of divine protection. The prophet Jeremiah pointed out, however, that relying on the temple and not the living God was a delusion and an illusion. Herod's temple was equally impressive and faithful Jews as disciples illustrated today put their hope in its sturdy structure with the concession that its destruction would herald the time of the end of the world. The temple indeed was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. But contrary to expectation, this event did not bring about the world's end. The word Jesus uses for time here is kairos, implying a decisive moment ordained by God, conveying both judgment and also grace and mercy. There have always been, and there will always be, countless theories about the end of the world. You remember, you may do, as we ushered in the new millennium in the year 2000, all manner of wild speculation occurred concerning the computer bug, which was called KY2, the year 2000, which would disable the world's computer systems at the stroke of midnight, causing mayhem and chaos. I worked in communications at that time and was on standby over that midnight hour in case doomsday situation happened. This kind of scaremongering still goes on today, with some scientists speculating that in 2080, either a major asteroid collision will wipe us all out, or the sun will explode, consuming the Earth with it. And of course, we now have the threat of global warming. It's all rather depressing and unhelpful, because according to the teaching of Jesus, he says in Matthew's Gospel, Each day has enough trouble of its own. How are we to understand then the end of the world and the teaching of the second coming? Jesus clearly counsels us to avoid the trap of anxiety and being overcome with morbid fear. The truth is, we just don't know when these things will happen. 
But what we do know is that every day is an opportunity to live for God and that one day we will die, whether it's the end of the world or our natural death. And we will have to give an account for our lives. So let's live for today and live it to the full in the light of the gospel.